sci-fi, horror, fantasy, absurdism in the extreme. It's all available here in the Tales from the Omni Vault book series. Check the description for Amazon links so you can get your copies and start reading today. Thank you all, and now, on to the video. So, once again, for both of you to answer, let, let's talk about inspiration. Like, obviously, we're kaiju fans. Obviously, Gorgo is inspiring Gorgo. But, um, like, what would you say your biggest influences are in your the journeys to making all of these things? Like, what really inspires you with all of this? I'll let Patrick do that one first, because I'm more interested to hear his answer than mine. <laughs> <laughs> well, what, what inspires me to, uh, to do these uh, stories? Well, definitely... Uh, uh, it's probably a more interesting answer from Mac because my inspiration is what Mac created. <laughs> and, when you go back and forth, it'll create a feedback loop. It, yeah, yeah, and, uh, and everybody's screen will explode eventually. Um, but uh, yeah, so I was I was handed this stuff uh, by Mac, and that was actually what got me into doing the book uh, was seeing his stuff and and seeing what a great palette it was to work with. Um, so, uh, you know, it's not a very, uh, artsy answer, but it's, you know, it's, it was a very nuts and bolts answer, but I, uh, you know, uh, grew up obviously watching the, um, uh, watching the, uh, uh, various kaiju movies uh, from my youth, uh, well, you know, reruns. So <laughs> they were in my youth that I saw them and they, uh, <laughs> were always, you know, favorites of mine, and I'd, I'd wanted to do something for that. So back, uh, I think it was around uh, 2012, I got together with a friend of mine, and we did a book called World War Kaiju. And uh, that, <laughs> uh -huh. and that was uh, sort of a uh, alternate history where instead of creating the atomic bomb, the uh, America created kaiju and then the other countries started making their own kaiju and it turned into a cold war based on kaiju instead of blowing each other up um so uh that was a real um one of, one of my early graphic novels i think it was my some of my second graphic novel and uh, as as uh, luck would have it, it speaking of the feedback loop that was something <laughs> that Mac bought and has informed me he even had the posters from us, uh, from World War Kaiju on his wall hmm. in college. And and so when the time came for him to do a book, he said, I might as well get in touch with this Patrick guy. Now, by then, I'll backtrack just a little. I had done my... Another of my first loves is uh, detective noir movies, film noir, that kind of mm. thing, uh, the, and the movies and the books, uh, uh, and uh, also 1930s weird fiction. So I got together with the same writer from World War Kaiju, and we created a, uh, a series uh, uh, called Case File Arkham, and those were detective noir fiction mixed with weird horror, and uh, I was able to really uh, indulge my my love of uh, that era's look, you know, hats and trench coats and the whole deal, and uh, so it was amazing when Matt got in touch with me about about doing this project it happened i don't think he'd even read case file arkham or knew my interest in that era but it happened to take place in the 1940s and so you know that was oh i'm totally on board this is this is my project <laughs> that's where we ended up 
and and now with this with this uh, sequel, we still haven't left that era too much. There's still a lot of hats. Hmm. <laughs> so they'll never go out of style. Oh, yes. <laughs> Um, but yeah, kind of piggyback off of that a little bit of what Patrick's saying is, so a big inspiration for Soul War is World War Kaiju, if you really start thinking about it. I mean, it's all alternate history things, right? We have this weird, you know, World War II thing. We have Titanicus sinking the Titanic. And really just one thing that strikes me when you read a book that Patrick's done is the detail he takes in making sure things are periodically accurate. And there are so many times we will see books that are illustrated and they take place during a period, right? And they're like, okay, but why is the woman wearing like a business suit? Right? That's <laughs> not how, you know, people dressed in the 1940s. And I think that was just a huge deal about why we felt like when we wanted to make a book, we need to reach out to Patrick to do it because he was someone who already had a great portfolio of it and was someone I was already a fan of. I mean, if you have the written World War Kaiju book and you look in the back, my name is in there because I was one of the backers on the Kickstarter. <laughs> and it is in all the printed versions. I have checked at my local Barnes and Noble and I've seen it a few times. Um, <laughs> but I think really a lot of this is that I, and then kind of spinning off into the toys, I was I would spend so much money buying toys. I'm like, I thought it would be like, well, if I'm spending this money, I might just be more advantageous to actually start making my own stuff and kind of learn that process. And each iteration of figure remake is always a new thing we learned each time, right? Mm -hmm. The first Titanic is, isn't painted as well as Nosferidon, and Nosferidon isn't as perfect on other details, right? And then there's a joints a loose. And really, it's a fun iterative process each time one of these figures comes out because we learn new things that we can improve upon. So while Gorgo was a great release, I really think going into the future with Young Gary is going to be better. And I think the same can be said about our comic books, where the Soul War book was 180 pages, and that was great. But we think we learned is that maybe getting it down to 60, so it's a little bit more bite size, and we can, you know, do a little more. It's going to be a little bit easier for people to digest quickly. That's what, that's one of the things I do appreciate. Yeah, that you listen to feedback. I think that's a good sign. That's a that is a sign that you guys will be around for a while, I think. 